Hi, my name is Heather Yurness. I'm at Alberta Printmakers and today I'm going to talk to you about Intaglio or Intaglio. We're going to talk about uh, traditional methods and more current ways of making plates. Really super fun, appeals to photographers and uh, people who like to draw. So many ways of making an image. So this is a copper plate. This is sort of a traditional way of making an intaglio. Um, there's many ways of getting your image onto the plate. And some of the tools that you could use in a drawing kind of way are um, diamond point or dry point needles, which is what these are. And these, you, they're super sharp on the end. And you can literally draw right into the plate and create like a burr. You can also coat your plate with hard ground and then scratch away the hard ground and expose it to acid and that'll eat into the plate and give you some nice aquatint while well, you can use aquatint to make some nice shading and lines. There's many, many ways of getting your image and working with your image back and forth onto a copper plate. So this is a burnisher. This You could go in to smooth out lines that you've created, kind of smooth down those burrs so they won't hold ink. So the whole idea with Intaglio is that you're trying to create grooves into the plate that will hold ink. It's sort of the opposite of uh, relief print where when you're making a relief plate, the ink sits on top. In a copper plate or in an intaglio plate, the ink sits into the grooves and then you put the ink into those grooves and make a plate or make a print. So this is an image made from this plate. It kind of goes like that. And it's always the reverse of the plate, something to remember. The beauty of intaglio is that you can print it on many different kinds of paper and uh, fabric. So this one over here, this is printed on um, cloth. So this is an old apron that I had a little, made a little plate and the plate went through the press with the little plate. So that's another copper plate. This plate right here has uh, soft ground on it, which is another form of um, another technique to get your get some texture and stuff on there. Sandpapers in the back and some Aquatint tip to make the shading. So it's quite versatile, lots and lots of ways of getting your image onto your plate and then running it through the press. This is uh, an intaglio print as well. This is made on a solar plate and it works on the principle that the plate is covered with photosensitive material and then you get your image by placing it, the image on top of the plate, exposing it to UV light and then rinsing it out. So unlike a more traditional method, this uses sunlight as the activator and um, it's more environmentally friendly. So this plate right here is a photograph and I got the image by using this transparency. I took this photograph, or yeah, took the photograph, made the transparency, and then laid this transparency on top of an unexposed plate, exposed it, washed it out with water, and then hardened it with uh, UV light again. So this method definitely would appeal to people who um, like photography. It can also be though, it's not just for photography, it also can be used for um, drawing as well. So this is a drawing on a transparency. So the same idea is wherever there's black lines, it blocks out the light. And then when you go to rinse it out, those black lines get washed away and make little tiny grooves. I don't know if you can see that. Little tiny grooves into the plate that hold the ink. So the, this method definitely you can use photography as well as drawing. You can do dry point directly on this as well. This is a KM plate similar to a solar plate and it works in the same principle. So this one was covered with uh, light blocking ink and then I drew directly onto the plate and created not just an intaglio but almost like a relief plate and gives you these lovely juicy lines. Okay, so now we're over at the inking up station. I've got some aqua wash and some Cranfield. These are both oil based but water soluble, 
while still while dry. When they're dry, they're permanent, so they're great for for doing um, experimenting. Different kinds of paper you can try. I'm just wiping the ink onto the plate with this plastic credit card, and then I'm going to take tarlatan, which is like a stiffened cheesecloth. And the tarlatan is going to force the ink into the grooves that I've made on the plate and take off the stuff, the ink that's sitting on the surface. So, and you use a twisting motion. to get it into the grooves and crevices that you've created with those different techniques, like either with acid, chemicals, or by doing a manual drawing approach. So it's good to switch up your tarlatan as you're going. So the first pass is usually just to get it right into there, and now we're gonna try and take off the surface ink with the tarlatan. And one more clean wipe. Kind of making like a little round ball. So at this point, usually pick it up Take a piece of newsprint and gently wipe off all the surf surface ink so you get those nice, clear, and clean whites of the paper showing. So you don't want to rub too hard because that'll pull the ink out of the grooves, but you want to rub hard enough that you're taking it off the plate where you haven't put any marks. And there you can kind of see, get a kind of a good idea of your image. And then I take a cloth and wipe off the edges. So, okay, so I've placed my plate onto a registration uh, form right here. And this just allows me to put my plate down exactly in the same place every time. And then I have the size of my paper also on this mylar so that it's not a guessing game. I know exactly where the paper's gonna go every time. The plate is on uh, an etching press. This is a really old etching press and that's pretty much all it does is does intaglios and etchings. Also on here, you'll notice there are some, they're called blankets, felts. Uh, there's three of them, and it's used to press the wet paper into the plate to pick up the, the ink um, in those lines that, we, that I've made. You turn the wheel, once I put the paper in, we'll turn the wheel and run it through the press. So let's go get the paper. Soaking in the water is special paper that's used for intaglio and etching. This paper has to be able to be soaked, so that's why it can't be any kind of paper. It has to be specific to this process. This stuff, the paper I have in here is BFK. I think I have some Hanamula. The colored paper that I have here, I spray painted beforehand on BFK. Um, so it's permanent, it won't bleed. Um, but I still can soak the paper and run it through the press. I'm going to take a piece of paper out with these little tongs just to keep it, keep the paper clean because usually my hands are covered in ink. Let it drip for a little bit just to get the excess water off. And then move it over to, I like to use a yoga mat, or sorry, a yoga, yoga towel. Works really great because it can be washed if it gets dirty. And then either a rolling pin or a brayer works really great to take off the excess ink, or sorry, excess water, not ink. And 
there it is. So you can see the water imprint there. It's still really soft and flexible. And I'm gonna take it over to the press and run it through. Now I'm gonna line up my printing paper, the registration that I put on there. Put down newsprint. The felts that help press the paper into the plate. And turn the press to run the plate through the heavy rollers and the steel press bed. Get a good body, upper body workout. <laughs> now comes the fun part. Move the blankets out of the way. Lift up the newsprint. And then slowly lift up your print. Off your plate. It's like Christmas. So one of the great things about printmaking in general, and specifically Intaglio, is all the fun things that you get to experiment with once you have your image. So what I'm going to show you here is called Chincolé. So this is a thin piece of paper that I've coated with um, rice paper paste. I've let it dry, um, and then I'm going to put it on top of my plate and then put my wet paper that I've taken out of the water bath and rolled up on top of that and then hopefully this chincolet thin paper will stick to the, uh, the main paper. So thin paper down first, main paper on top, And then we're just going to run it through the press just like we did before. And hopefully it will stick. It's always tricky sometimes just getting the right amount of paste onto the, the wet paper. Here we go. So it's stuck to the paper. Yay. <laughs> it's always super fun to look to see what works. So I'm not going to ink up the solar plate that has the photographic image on it um, using Prussian blue, love Prussian blue, uh, just so that you can see the difference between a traditional copper plate and the more modern um, solar plate. Same principle that we're trying to get the ink into all the little half tone lines and different uh, gradations that I've made. When you're using a photographic image that has um, different tones and values, you have to use an aquatint screen so that the um, solar plate will hold that ink. It's a two-step process. So just pressing the ink again into those parts. And depending on how deep or how many lines and grooves you have will depend, will determine how much wiping you have to do. So if you have a really dense 
dark plate, it will take a bit more effort to wipe it up. So you can tell as you're wiping when you're getting close to being done because you don't want to over wipe your plate when you can't see any more ink wipe marks left when it's just sitting in the in the crevices and you can where you've got highlights really white you can go back in and really kind of burnish those we'll go print that one up okay i've got my damp paper and i'm gonna put it on the registration here and then run through the uh, solar plate And that's a solar plate with a photographic transparency used to create the image. The last one that I'm going to show you is a print or a plate that I've done on a KM73 plate that AP has here. Um, this is only one technique that you can do on here, and this involves rolling up the unexposed plate, so it hasn't been developed yet, with black ink and then going back in and drawing into it and removing some of that ink so that the plate where you've removed it, is, it exposes the plate. So this was just an experiment. I hadn't used one of these plates before, so uh, be kind. <laughs> I'm gonna ink it up now. I've washed it out quite heavily, and that means that it actually works almost like a relief plate. So I've exposed it and then I've washed it out um, quite a bit so that you get really deep valleys that you could literally um, roll up this plate with a brayer. But right now I'm going to wipe it as an Italio just to get some of those, see, see what that looks like. You could also use it as embossing. So that means running the plate through the press with wet paper but no ink on it. So you would just get the whole texture of the plate. Because it's so deep, it's tricky to get it, get the ink right into some of the spots and it takes a little bit of kind of wiggling it in there. So I think I've got it in there pretty good. I'm now going to try and remove the ink that's sitting on top. And you can kind of see. Paper, registering it again, laying it down. Never quite sure. So this was more about the mark making, just trying to figure out what kind of marks I could make. So there's oil, baby oil, um, brushed on to remove some of the paint that I had said to you before, scratched through. Um, there's a fork marks in there. So just kind of trying to see what, what I could come up with. So just for fun, I'm gonna run this extra piece of damp paper that I have on top of the plate that I just ran through. It's called a ghost print, just to see what that looks like. Because in printmaking, you can. <laughs> so 
So that's the ghost print. You can see the details a little bit better, which I think I actually like better than the other one. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video on Intaglio and the different kinds of ways of going about making images. Um, whether you're a drawer or a photographer, as I mentioned, Intaglio is the perfect printmaking method to explore. All the equipment here, as I mentioned before, also is communal. So sign up, get a membership, and then check the website for um, coming online classes, and hopefully in the future, in person. Thanks, take care. Hi, my name is Heather Yurness. I am a printmaker artist living in Calgary, Alberta. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make an intaglio print using a dry point technique with tools and supplies that uh, you probably have around your house. We're gonna use things like nails, nice and sharp, pin tool if you happen to have it, and old CDs and DVDs to make our printing plate. As well, we're gonna use a pasta machine that we're now gonna call the pasta press. We're gonna use the press to print our plates once they've been dry pointed and inscribed with lines. And we're gonna pull a print on the pasta machine that looks something like that. Let's get set up, it's gonna be fun. take our pasta press and mount it onto a table or piece of wood that will make it really secure. Um, on this one I've drilled screws right through the plate of the press of the pasta machine and then attached it to this purple wood which is separate. This particular machine also has a separate clamp that goes into the machine and then screws underneath and uh, attaches that way. What you wanna make sure when you're doing this, when you're setting it up, is that your handle is free from the edge of the table so that you'll be able to turn the handle freely without it hitting anything. I've also used some Gorilla Tape right here to secure it to another table just so that it doesn't move because when you are turning your um, plate and the paper through the press it gets kind of tight so you want to be able to have it nice and strong. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take uh, your paper that you have, newsprint, take newsprint, you want to make all of your paper the same size and uh, make sure that it fits into the slot that's right here so not wider so not that it's pinching on the side. This is a piece of uh, light cardboards from one of those folders. This is a really great thing. Also, same size. And then I've also cut a piece of felt. Again, the same size. So take your folder first. You're gonna put in, and we're just testing the gauge right now is what we're doing. So we're gonna put the felt in. We're gonna put one piece of newsprint in like so. We're gonna put a empty or unworked on DVD print, we're gonna, or a plate, we're gonna put it in that way. And also one piece of paper that you're gonna eventually print on. Make a little sandwich with it, put it into the slot, and then give it a turn to see how it goes through. So I've had to play around with this a little bit. I've had to move the gauge. On the side of the pasta machine, there's a little gauge that makes the, the opening wider or smaller. Right now, this is on the widest one. Um, so you're gonna help it out through the bottom, press it through all the way. And I know that that's the right gauge because it leaves um, an impression on the paper. So this was just a test to make sure that everything is good to go so that when we start printing, um, we don't have to kind of fool around with it then. 
next step is to get your rubber container or whatever container you have. Uh, fill it up with water so that it's deep enough to uh, soak your paper. And you're just gonna put the paper in and let it absorb the water while you're working on your drawing and your plate. What I like to do is trace the shape of the plate onto a piece of newsprint. So then it gives us gives me the actual size that I'm going to be working with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rough drawing on here and uh, I'm going to use that sort of as my pattern to then go ahead and do the dry point onto that plate. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of pieces of tape onto the back of the plate just so that I can stick it to the paper and it doesn't slip around as much. So just like that. And remember I'm going to scratch heavier where the lines are darker so that will, like I mentioned, that will keep that ink, a lot more ink in there. So when I can turn the paper Go all the way around, really scratching in to get those dark, thick lines in there. And I'm going to do that all the way around and then I'm going to continue with the design on the outside and doing some really heavy scratching. I also switch up the tools as I go. Okay, I think we're ready for the next step, which uh, involves inking up our plate. Here's the plate so far. It's got lots of little lines in it. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to proof the plate. So that means just kind of checking to see what the state is, what the state of the plate is, if I like where it's going, if I need to add some more things. So you can definitely ink it up, roll it through the press, check it and then wash the plate off and continue working if you think it needs some more work on it. So that's so what we're the ink do. I use is, I use a couple different ones, but the one I'm using here is Caligo Safe Wash Etching Ink. Um, comes in a whole bunch of different colors, washes off really easy with water and it's permanent. Um, I love it. I should have a thing that says, things I love, Gorilla Tape. Love Gorilla Tape. Love Calico Ink. Hmm. Think of some more things. So you're gonna spread out a little bit of ink. This is an old plastic credit card. These work really great. I use these um, all the time. I have a whole container full of them. So what I'm doing with the ink is I'm just spreading it around, kind of warming it up, stretching out the, the uh, molecules making it nice and smooth, making sure there's no lumps or anything in it. And then I'm going to take and put my plate on top of this newsprint right here. I'll just move that over a little bit. And then I'm gonna take that much ink and I'm gonna spread it. So the idea here is that you're trying to get the ink to go into all the little grooves that you've made on your on your plate. You're kind of forcing them in there. You don't want a ton of ink because you're gonna end up scraping most of it off or kind of moving it off. 
first couple of passes is you're just trying to get it into that groove. And then I kind of like to wipe that off there. This is an old eraser. You can tell I've used it a lot. Um, but it's nice because it has a smooth edge on it now. And then I can go back into the plate and kind of rub it. Because I'm actually, if you can see that, forcing the ink even deeper into the little grooves. I'm gonna take Tarleton. This is Tarleton that's got some ink on it. And the idea here is the first wipe or press with your Tarleton. You can also use try using cheesecloth or any kind of fabric that has a rough open weave to it because you can see, because I've used this on other plates, that it's caught the ink. Um, so we're trying to take off and force into the grooves and I do this with a twisting motion to kind of get it deep into those little lines that you've created, that we've created in the plate. Go ahead with this, and I'm gonna actually remove quite a bit of the surfacing with my newsprint. I'm kind of turning the plate. So you can start to see that the ink is now sitting in those crosshatch lines and those really heavy lines that have been inscribed into the plate. I don't know if inscribed is the right word, but it could be. One of your pieces of paper, which is sometimes easier said than done. And then just kind of let the excess sort of drip off like that. I usually have like the lid of the container kind of sitting right in the, in the uh, water bath. So then it can just sit on the plastic lid and drip. So once it's got that far, about that off, it's not dripping a lot anymore. Move it over to a yoga towel. Another favorite thing for sure. I've used these yoga towels over and over again. They're super absorbent. They get dirty, I can wash them. It's really great. I'm gonna fold the top over because we now wanna take most, not all of the water, but most of the water off so that it's not um, gonna dilute your, your ink. I'm using my hand because I have now lost my rolling pin. I would use to roll out the extra. Oh, oh, there it is. This works really great too. Or if you have a baron, if you're doing any relief printing, a baron also works really good. But this is my <laughs> my kitchen equipment. So now that it's somewhat damp, you can still see like it's flexible and you can feel that it's slightly damp. So we're gonna to start to build the our, that we talked about. This is the folder. We've got one piece of felt that we've cut to size. We've got the newsprint at the back, just to kind of protect the paper. I'm gonna put our nice damp paper into the sandwich. And then I'm gonna, before I put the plate in, I'm gonna actually start this in here. It just makes it and roll it down just a bit so that it catches all four pieces of paper and then kind of open it like this. And then I'm gonna take our newly inked up and polished plate. Oops, try not to touch the back here. Oh, here's a little thing. Also good idea to remember to wash the back of your, your plate. I'm gonna do that actually really quickly right here. It just keeps things from being a big giant mess. So yeah, remember, check the back of your plate. It's not gonna get all of it off, but it'll get most of it off. And now my hands are super dirty. I'm gonna take it and flip it over. Try not to touch the, uh, the nice wet paper 
kind of put it down so it's just touching the bottom. Then I'm gonna hang on to this and the whole thing, I'm gonna roll it through. And you'll see that it kind of, the bottom is short where the paper starts to touch. So just kind of lift it up a bit as it's going, because then that will help it come through the press. So this is the part that's super exciting always, no matter what you're doing. It's like, it's like a present, <laughs> it's like Christmas. So felt comes off and then we're gonna peel off the plate. So there is the first proof of that plate. And there's the plate that it came from. So I could see that there's, you know, lots of things that can be worked on and changed a bit. If you do end up getting ink and stuff on the side here, um, just wait till it dries and then just take one of those kneadable erasers, the white ones, and kind of dab it because this is just sitting right on the top so it'll come off easily. Don't try and do it while the paper is still wet. Um, it'll just smear it some more. In order to have nice flat prints, I like to lay my still slightly damp prints that I've just pulled on top of a piece of MDF. Place a piece of newsprint just on top of each one. And then put another piece of MDF on top of that. And then leave them overnight. Once you're done printing, to clean up, you just use soap and some water and a soft sponge. This is just a makeup sponge. And then you just run your plates and your tools underwater a little bit, get in the grooves and crevices set them out to dry or you could gently towel dry them and uh, you'll be ready to go for the next time. I've been asked if this process would be suitable for children and the answer is yes. If the child is really young what they could do is draw their image on the plate with a permanent marker and then an adult could go back in and do the dry points graffito part for them. If the child's old enough they could do that part themselves, maybe with a little support. Most kids really enjoy wiping up the plate at least once or twice, and uh, running a plate through the press is always a fun thing to do. Well, folks, that's all she printed. Thanks very much for watching. I really hope that you've been inspired and happy printing on your pasta press.